Good morning. Oh, I kind of like that. They already got you prepped and ready to come on in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all be praying that we don't have no glitches. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Come on in and share. We're going to do our praying this morning. Good morning. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All righty, good morning, good morning. Glad to be here to be able to pray with you for another day. My screen is doing something weird, but that's okay. Let me do what I normally do, pull up my Facebook so I can see comments in case the comments freeze on this side. How's everybody this morning? How is everybody this morning? All righty. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, we are um, Dr. Jewel Williams, for those that may come that don't know me. And we are doing, we are praying through the names and the attributes of God. And so um, I am excited to be able to come and pray with you again this, this Thursday morning. And please, when you come on in, go ahead and share for me. Go ahead and share for me. I'm trying to uh, see if it'll let me do a little something here. It's not letting me, so we're just going to leave that alone. All right. So let me let me go. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure you can hear me OK and um, and that everything is all right. You can hear me. Let me know you can hear me. If you'll put in the comments that you can hear me, because I just want to make sure we have no no issues before we get started. Just want to make sure we have no issues before we get started. All righty. I don't see the comments moving, so I just need to know. Could somebody write in a comment? Let me know you hear me. Okay, great. Thank you, Keisha. All right. Well, let me just jump right into what God has been showing me. And so I'm going to show you the first as we're talking about praying through the attributes. Has this been a blessing to you? I know it's been blessing me just being able to pray through the names. Good morning, Brent. Praying through the names of God and praying through the attributes of God. And so that has really just been a, a blessing. And so I want to show you the first thing we're going to be praying through uh, today. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. And I'm coming from Psalm 23 and one. Now, this is just a small verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Now, if we look closely at this whole scripture and even just looking at the breaking down of what this means. So Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals Rapha means uh, uh, means to shepherd or feed uh, or to supply with food. Um, and so, um, was somebody having an issue getting on? Um, I thought she was actually on, so I'm not sure if this was a late text. Marcy, are you on? Cause you sent me, a, I got a text that you were having a difficulty getting on. You just got to click on the, the button. It kind of came through a little different than it normally does because of the platform that I'm using. So, um, I hope you are on. Anyway, so just going back to what I was sharing is Rafa is means to shepherd or means to feed or means to supply with food. 
Uh, it also means to be a good friend. So the one you so when so when David is talking about the Lord is my shepherd, he is really saying that God is this great friend who provides extravagant nurture nourishments for me, protections for me, as well as rest for my weary body and my weary soul. So when he says the Lord is my shepherd, he's talking about something even deeper than just the shepherd, as in you know the the shepherd in the sense that we see that takes care of the sheep. He's talking Talking about it in a deeper sense and, and, and really understanding fully what that means in terms of provision. Because you think about the shepherd and the sheep, the sheep don't know how to go get the food or where's the right place to go to, to graze without the shepherd being there to to, to uh, take them and show them. And so when, when we hear about the Lord is my shepherd, and remember, I'm talking about healing. How does that relate to healing? When we're talking about the Lord is my shepherd, it really is taking us into this greater understanding that everything we need comes from God. And when you look at the fullness of the 23rd Psalm, he's talking about all that I need comes from you. And so you and I can say, when we talk about the Lord being our shepherd, we're talking about Jehovah Rapha, we're really talking about he is the Lord who heals me. He is the Lord that's going to provide what I need. Now, let me explain something about healing. We want to sometimes tell God the way that he should heal and how he should heal, but we have to trust his healing. Sometimes for some of us, there's an instant healing. Praise God for that. For some of us, there's a process. For me, I always seem to get the process healing where God tells me I have to change something. I have to partner with him in some way, but then he still brings the healing. For some people, even though we may see it and it looks like a suddenly, they still may have had to go through a process to get to the healing. But this is the key thing that we need to understand about it. He is still the one that heals, but also we need to understand that he's going to provide for us in the process. He's going to provide for us as we walk through through the way. He's going to provide for us as we we trust him, as we seek to uh to be able to go with him. So he's going to be the one that's going to help us in the time. He's going to help us along the way. And so it is really God that is going to help us in this time of we when we need this healing from him. Amen. And so I want to pray into that. That's one of the first things I want to pray into this morning. And again, when you look at the whole 23rd Psalms, he talks about how God not only is the shepherd and he meets all of his needs, but he talks about how he leads him to a place of rest. He leads him to a place of peace and by peaceful strength, he renews his strength. He guides him along right paths. You and I need that. We need for him to walk Walk us through some dark places. We need him to be close beside us. We need him to protect us and comfort us and shield us. We need him to anoint us. We need our cup to overflow when he is with us. These are some of the things that we need from him. And even as we walk with him, these are the things we need. Why? Because without him, we can't, we can't do a thing. We really are without him lost. And so Father, today as your children, we come and say, thank you, Lord, for you are the healer. We thank you, Lord, because you will provide everything we need. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that provides for us. You're the God that feeds us. You're the God that supplies our needs. You're the God that sustains us. You are the God that helps us every step of the way. And we thank you today, Lord, because of all that you do for us. We thank you today, Lord, because we know that without you, we're not able to stay. We know that without you, we're not able to move and have our being. We know that without you, God, there is nothing else. There is no other way. There is no other answer. And so we thank you today, Lolo, that you are the answer. We thank you today, Lord, to know that as the healer, you step in and provide for us where we need. We thank you today, Lord, to know that we can rest in you like the, the, the weary sheep that needs to be picked up. Lord God, there are times we need you to pick us up. I'll raise my hand. We often need you to pick us up and carry us on to the things that we need. We thank you today, Lord, know that not only you are nourishing us. Because I hear the Lord say that sometimes we're looking at sickness. It's the condition in our body. But the truth is, some of that has is just, it has happened because of spiritual uh, um, things that we're out of alignment. Thank you, Jesus. He says, sometimes we're not in alignment. And because we're not in alignment, what happens is we sometimes feel it in the physical. You know, think about it. If God is saying, I am going to be your provider, if I'm the God of, of your shepherd, if I'm the one that's carrying you, nurturing, protecting you, giving you rest for your weary body and soul, why are you fretting about a thing? Why are you worried about a thing? And sometimes we can worry and stress ourselves to then what happens? Our blood pressure 
pressure is out of whack. Our sugar is out of whack. So God says some of the conditions in our bodies can even be healed when we realign ourselves with him, when we realign ourselves to his promises to us, when we realign ourselves to the truth. See, the enemy been lying for us too long and telling us, oh, you this and you that. And then we're stressing. Why? Because we have forgotten that the Lord is our shepherd. We have forgotten that I have all that I need in him. We have forgotten that he keeps us, provides us. We've forgotten that he's Jehovah Rapha. We've forgotten that he heals. We've forgotten that he carries. We've forgotten that he he helps us. We've forgotten. So Lord God, I come and ask right now that you realign our thinking and understanding so that we know you are the healer, that we know that not only do you heal us in the natural, but there may be some soul issues that are now manifested. Because I see a lot of people that have some things that they are dealing with in the in the physical that if they would forgive the person they're angry with. Do you know you hold an anger? I mean, we've seen that thing that says you hold an anger and bitterness and, and, you're, and, and it, it's like bitterness. And they say it's like drinking poison, expecting somebody else to die. You holding on to bitterness and anger and resentment. And guess what it's doing? It is killing you. It is bit. It is. um poisoning you and it is making you sick. So Father, help us to let go of bitterness. Help us to be forgiving. It doesn't matter because sometimes I know I've been guilty of this. We want God to, we want, we want to forgive, but we want God to do justice for us. We want him to get them people. Lord, they did this to us. Go get them. God is not like that. God says forgive because you know what he may do? Just like he forgave our sins and didn't hold it against us. He may forgive the individual that did us wrong. Why? Because really he wants to put them in right standing. And so God, help us to be forgiven. Help us to let go of those things that, that sometimes we, that, that, that we are continually digesting. We're continually eating on. I remember the Lord told me a long time ago, he says, Jewel, stop eating the dead things. Stop eating the dead things. What are the dead things? The things that would poison you, the bitterness, the anger, the hatred, the, the lies that the enemy keep telling you that God don't love you. The rejection, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of comparison. All of those things are the, the dead things, the, the dead works that the enemy wants you to chew on and eat on. And when you do, they will poison your body. Hey, carabasa. They will poison your system. And so God says healing sometimes, our understanding about how we need to be healed first needs to come into an understanding of Lord, what's going on on the inside of me. Father, reveal what things need to be fixed. Reveal the things, Lord, that maybe I'm not even aware of, but that you want me to see so that I can get into the right place. I can get into the right alignment to be healed. I can't expect to be healed in, in, in of high blood pressure if I keep on stressing and, and stressing and stressing about the same thing. So Father, I pray that even as we come to you and say, Jehovah Rapha, heal us because you are the shepherd. You have all that I need. Even as we stand in that place, Lord God, remind Remind us today. Remind us that you give us nourishment. You nourish our bodies. You protect us. Lord God, you're protecting us from all the lies and the deceptions of the enemy. You're protecting us from everything that he would try to do to kill, steal, and destroy. Because we know that's all he does. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you've come to give us life more abundantly. And that's not just finances. More abundant life means I can walk in the fullness. I can walk in the peace. I can walk in the rest. I can walk Walk in the provisions. I don't have to. You don't have to be in this place of lack. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd. And he says, I have all. He has all that we need. I have. Say that to yourself. The Lord is my shepherd and I have all that I need. If I need it, I got it. Whatever God says is for me, I shall have it. I shall keep it. I shall walk in it. And the Lord, the Lord says, stop letting the enemy take away a victory. Think about that. You already got a victory. You already won it. He said, why are you letting the enemy take away your victory? And this is how he showed it to me. I'm not sports. I'm not a sports person, but he showed me. He said, you know, when they hit the ball, when they play in baseball and they hit a home run and it goes out the park, 
They won that. They've got that ball. They've got that point. But guess what they still got to do? They still got to run all the bases and they can't miss one base. They have to touch each base before they get the home plate and then get that score. God says you've got the victory. You just got to run the bases. You just got to run the process. You just got to go through what I've called you to go through because you've already got the victory. So don't let the enemy take from you what I've already given to you. You already won over your health. You've already already healed. And and it doesn't matter whether the healing comes now. I know some of us want the healing now, but can I even tell you, sometimes you're praying for a, a loved one that, that, that dies and you go, well, Lord, you didn't answer my prayer. Maybe God says that I did answer it. I just answered it different than what you did. They're lo- no longer suffering. They're no longer in pain. We just got to be at this place where we appreciate and, and accept the sovereignty of God. That is hard for us because we want God to answer the way we want God to answer. But even when we go and say, God, Jehovah Rapha, you are the God that heals. We're going to trust your sovereignty. We're going to trust that sometimes your answer is, yes, I'm going to heal them immediately. Sometimes your answer is, yes, I'm going to heal them, but they're going to learn something through the process. They're going to learn something in the journey. They're going to they're going to encounter me in ways they never encountered me before. And so we still have to understand God's hand is still there. And for some of us, our loved ones don't seem to make it. But if they die in Christ, they have not lost. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. They have not lost. (laughs) They have not lost. And so God says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. I am the one that will give you and sustain you. I am the one that will nourish you and protect you. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. That 23rd Psalm, David was reminding us that the Lord is with you. He said, I give you rest in green meadows. You know, you can find rest even in the midst of your condition. He said, I'm going to walk with you through the darkest valley. For some people going through their sickness and their condition, that's a dark valley. He said, but David said, but I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because you're close by my side. I need to encourage somebody today. God is close by your side. So no matter what you're walking through, whether it's a physical healing you need, whether it's emotional healing, whether it's a spiritual, whatever the level of healing you need, I come to encourage you today that God says I'm close by your side. God, thank you that you are close by our side. We do not go this way alone. We do not go alone. You are with us. And because you are with us, we can say thank you. Because you are with us, we are able to stand. Because you are with us, we will not get weary in the journey, in the walking. I just come right now and decree strength over your people. Lord God, have your strength in the in your people. Lord, give them the, the stamina they need even as they walk in the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Lord God, we thank you right now that you continue to give us the strength that we need. Lord, because you are the shepherd. You are the good, good shepherd. You are the good, good father. You are Abba. You are the good, good father. And Lord, we thank you. It doesn't make sense. We can see sickness around us and we can see those things, but we come today, Lord God, and we ask you to release healing. Let your healing power and healing virtue be released over your people today. They know the conditions. You know the conditions. And Father, Father, we say thank you right now. Heal in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ has opened that avenue to us. And you have already said that by his stripes, we are healed. That's a past tense. That means you've already released the healing. Help us to walk into it. Help us to receive it in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for changing bodies today. Molecular structures are changing. Father, I thank you, Lord, those that have gone through chemo, those that have gone through any kind of radiation, any kind of condition that has have weakened their body, I speak new strength to them. Lord, restore appetites. Lord, some people um, even have gone through for different chemo and, and, and they've got like the burns afterward. Father, I pray right now that you would heal those areas, allow them to be able to swallow, uh, hint, hint, strengthen their throats in the name of Jesus. Renew their appetites in the name of Jesus. Begin to 
breathe back new strength into them in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for being that healing that they need, Lord God. I thank you for healing those that are dealing with diabetes and with, with high blood pressure, Lord God, those that have cramps in their legs and issues in their backs. We thank you for healing body parts right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing tears and muscles right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you because you are the healer. We thank you, Father. It is not in us. It is all in you. It is who you are. And we come because as your children, you have given us the opportunity and the right. We can come before you and ask a thing. And as your children, we come in agreement, Lord, for those that are in need. Father, those that are in need, we thank you for the strengthening of bodies. And Lord, we also come and pray for those that have emotional scars. Lord, those that have been abused and are still carrying the weight of that. Those that have been sexually abused, those that have been have verbally abused, we thank you right now, Lord, that you are healing that identity. No longer let them carry the burden and the weight of that which was done to them. Let them walk in the freedom of it right now in the name of Jesus. Let them be able to move the way you have called for them to move. Father, we say thank you because you are an awesome God, an awesome God. And we thank you right now that you are allowing your children to feel and experience the healing. Father, we thank you because you are the breaker. You break off the things that need to be broke off, break off the lies on the identity of your children right now in the name of Jesus. Break off those things, Father, that you have seen. Uh, yes, I will break off those things right now, Lord, that you see that, that, that are keeping your children in bondage. And I bring Hannah to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, she's got chemo today. Father, we thank you that even as she is walking this journey, we thank you, Father, because we're going to agree with your report. We're going to agree that your report over Hannah is healed in the name of Jesus. We're going to agree as a body of believers for Hannah today, that even as she's going through her chemo, that it won't wipe her out, that her strength will begin to be renewed consistently, that she will be able to have her strength, she will be able to eat, she will be able to see a reduction and an increase in who she is. And Father, we thank you and speak to every cell that is, that is uh, every cancer cell, we curse it right now at the root and kill it to die. We commission it to go back to hell from which it came, Father, and we commission that your, her body would align it itself, that it would be renewed by way of the Holy Spirit. It would be refreshed by way of the Holy Spirit. We declare over Hannah right now, Lord, that she's going to walk in the fullness, in the fullness. We come because we are coming to Jehovah Rapha. You said you'll give her nourishment, protection, and you will give her rest for her weary body and soul. Father, and I also ask that you continue to just increase her, um, her joy even in this season because the enemy not only will he attack the body but he will try to try to attack a person's trust and faith let it be double let it be triple let it be renewed in this season and we say thank you right now for all that you are doing for hannah and father we say thank you we're looking for testimonies we're looking for the miraculous we're looking lord god for the statement to be that everything is clear everything is good with Hannah. We say thank you. And I speak, pray for Chuck as well, that as he is walking with his wife, that as he is praying over her, Lord God, I thank you that, that, that together they are trusting you. And I thank you that their faith continue to grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let it be manifested in ways that others will be able to see it and marvel at the great love that they have for each other and that they have for you. And I just thank you, Lord God, for the testimony that we are going to hear about Chuck and Hannah in this season. And we just say, thank you, Lord. And we believe that it is so. We believe that it's so. We believe that it's so. Thank you, Jesus. We believe that it's so. And I'm going to Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. Exodus 17, 15 says, Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi or Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. Now, let me tell you what that chapter 
This is, you know, if you read all of the Exodus 17, you will see that this is when Moses was dealing with the people. They were leaving from the wilderness of sin. That's a whole message right there by itself. Sometimes our sickness and sometimes we find ourselves in these places because we're in a wilderness of sin and God will move us from those places. Sometimes he's got to move us from those sinful places. Sometimes he's got to move us from those doubtful places. He's got to move us from those places that are stagnant. He's got to move us from those places that keep us in bondage. He's got to move us from the places where we don't have the trust and the faith. He's got to move us from those places and he moves us to a place and he moves us so that we able to get out of and move on but see the people will complain if you read 17 and this is where moses uh he, he, he had to, you know, struck the water, the rock and the water came out. And, and later on, when we come down, they were going into battle. And, and, and so it was just, it just looked like everything was overwhelming. Have you been in a place where everything just looked overwhelming? Everything just looked overwhelming. Everything just looked overwhelming. Everything felt overwhelming. Everything kind of felt like this was the end. It wasn't going to get better. You, you, thought maybe uh, things were just not going to work out for you. But I come to encourage somebody today to let you know that the Lord is a banner over you. Jehovah Nisi, he is over you. Meaning that, 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 that what is written, you know, if you think about a banner, like this is a banner behind me and this banner behind me, it says we pray until some, until mountains are moved. And so that's the thought that something is over me. I want to declare to you today that what's over you is that God is your provider. What's over you is that the Lord is healing you. The banner over you today is victory. The words over you today is that God is not going to leave you nor forsake you. What's over you today is that God loves us. What's over you today is that he says, I will give you victory because even Nisi means flag or banner. And so it just means that it, it, this banner is a banner of victory. He's going to give us hope and focus that we are the one who wins in this battle. And so God helps us. That's right. He helps us from the unseen things, the things that you and I can't always see, but he protects us. He is with us. And, and again, we're talking about healing. God is saying we need to understand there's so many levels when we ask for healing. And I'm asking him, Lord, to teach me and give me greater revelation and understanding because because sometimes we'll just ask God to heal. For example, I got a cold. We just say, Lord, heal the cold. Well, that may just be the outward manifestation. What needs to be healed is something going on in the inside. And so the Lord wants us to understand that when we ask for healing, we also need to ask for wisdom. Lord, give me discernment and wisdom so I even know what needs to be healed. Father, I thank you that you're teaching us. Teach us how to even pray. Teach us to understand what what the words over us are. Help us to understand that there's victory over us so we can come and say, Lord, whatever's on the inside, heal me from the inside out. Heal my brokenness in the name of Jesus. If I have brokenness from things done from my past, Lord, heal me from that because I can't walk in the wholeness. I can't walk in the fullness of who you call me to be if I'm still broken on the inside. See, some of us, let me, oh, thank you, Jesus. God says some of us are overweight and have eating problems. And it's not because you're not disciplined. He said, some of us are still eating the bitterness or we're using sweets or we're using food to bring comfort. So when we get upset, we go to food because food has become that way of soothing us. And then what happens? We're dealing with the results of either being overweight or being sick. And so God says, sometimes we need to understand it. Oh my God, because I'm just gonna be, be real. I was over 200 pounds and, and, and I was getting worse and worse. And I was like, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me. But the Lord had to say, Jewel, you're missing the bigger picture. Come on, somebody. He said, you're missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is this. You're eating yourself. You're killing yourself because you're trying to soothe the brokenness. You're trying to soothe the, 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 the rejection. You're trying to comfort the, the loneliness. You're trying to use food to help you feel better. He said, but that is only a temporary fix. He said, I am the one that has all you need. That's what the 23rd Psalm says, 23 and one. That's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. He had to heal me from the inside 
inside out so that guess what happened when he healed the inside then my body began to line itself then I began to look like I was healed why because he was doing a healing on the inside come on somebody father I thank you today heal your children from the inside out so father i come today and i come against the spirit of rejection in your children lord god we ask for you to break it we ask for deliverance from rejection we ask you to bring us up out of these places where we continually are seeing ourselves less than and comparing ourselves to things that aren't what you comparing us to father i pray right now that you would bring your children up out of a sense of comparison stop comparing ourselves and then it's bringing anxiety and and it's bringing stress lord god i ask right now that you would bring your children up out of the of the residue of the abuse that's been done in their life some of y'all are carrying residue god says he wants to heal the residue lord heal the residue i speak deliverance on this live today let it come up and out come out of agreement with it right now in the name of jesus so father i just lead your children in this prayer say this with me you say it what it is say lord i come out of agreement and whatever you in agreement, come out of it. I come out of agreement with rejection. I come out of agreement with uh, the lie that I'm not good enough. I come out of agreement with the, the, the lie that I need to be perfect. I come out of the agreement that, that, that I'm nothing. I come out of agreement with everything that the enemy has said against me. I come out of agreement. I come out of agreement. Now, Lord, because I've come out of agreement, I now come into agreement with the Holy Spirit and say this, I come into agreement, Holy Spirit, that you are going to heal me. I come into agreement and I release myself to you that you can have your full way in me. I come in agreement, Lord God, and say, have your way in me today. Do the work that needs to be done in me because you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Lord God, you are my shepherd and everything I need, it is in you. Thank you you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus father we give you praise right now in the name of jesus some just in chariots and some in horses but we trust in the name of the lord our god father we thank you because the banner over us today is victory the banner over us today is freedom. I declare a breaking in the spirit right now for your children. Father, we thank you because we've come out of agreement with those things from our past. We've come out of agreement with the lies that we tell ourselves. We've come out of agreement because God can't heal you and deliver you from something that you're in agreement with. So I come out of agreement with everything that they lie that the enemy has told me. I'm no longer going to feed the dead things. I'm no I'm going to bring back and try to resurrect the things that are dead. I, I come out of agreement with every lie. I come out of agreement with every deceptive thing. And I believe the Lord's report with me. I come into agreement and believe by way of the Holy Spirit that I have provision. I decree and declare that I am whole and healed. I decree and declare that blood pressure is regulated. I decree and declare that bodies are healed right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that legs that have been having issues with somebody's been having issues in their leg, like your feet swell up if you sit too long. I declare right now that your body aligns with the truth of God's words, that you will run, you will walk, and you will not get weary. I declare that your legs are having, uh, they are being regulated right now in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are walking in the fullness of who God has called for you to be. I thank you, Jesus. That's right. We come out of agreement with the spirit of fear because fear has helped held many of you from walking fully in your giftingness. Uh, we come out of agreement with fear, with doubt, with the lie that you're not good enough. And I declare a boldness. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power. I just decree, decree and declare power is released over you today. There's a boldness coming on you like never before. And we thank you right now for that boldness in Jesus' name. Father, I bring Keith, um, 
I bring Keith to you right now in the name of Jesus. Keith Club to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you know what he stands in need of. And so, Father, I thank you right now where he is, that you meet that need, where he is, that the banner over him right now is victory. The banner over him, the word over him, the message over him is freedom. The message, the word over him is a uh, provision. Lord God, I thank you right now that you are working those things out in his favor. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for Eunice right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you know what Eunice needs. And so, Father, we thank you right now that you are a you are a God that meets every need. And we thank you. Every need is met today. We thank you, Father, because you are an awesome God. And Father, we do not give the credit to anybody but you. Father, it don't matter if we went to the doctor and the doctor gave us some medicine. Whatever it is that happens, Lord, it is still you. You still get the honor. You still get the praise. You still are the one that does it all. And so, Father, we thank you today and acknowledge that you are our healer. You are the one that sustains us, keeps us, and moves us forward. So, Father, we say thank you right now. And we come against the spirit of cancer in the name of Jesus. Father, we just declare healing and wholeness over the bodies of your people. Father, we speak to those cells in the body and we by the fire of God. By the fire of God, we speak fire on those cancerous cells in the bodies of the people and we command them by the spirit of God to begin to burn off. Lord God, we thank you right now for the healing virtue being released. Father, even as people are going to their, their appointments, even as people are doing the things that are before them, we thank you right now, Lord God, that you are releasing healing. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we say thank you. We still praying for healing. We still praying for healing. We still praying for healing. El Kanan jealous God. Let me tell you how that relates to, to, to healing. Exodus 20 and 5 says, you may not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected, even in the ch children of the third and fourth generation of those who rejected me. Now, let me tell you why the Lord gave me that. And it wasn't that he is saying he's going to put some things on other folks. God is saying that he needs to be our main source. He needs to be our main source. He needs to be our main source. Let me say that again. He needs to be our main source. And it doesn't mean jealous and envious like we as he people understand jealous and envious. In this sense, it really is talking about God being almost like, for the lack of, a, of another example, if you know, for example, a man who's married, he don't want nobody rolling up on his wife. This is his wife. That you, you, This is your husband. You don't want some woman rolling up on your Why? Because this is the covenant relationship you have. You don't want nothing coming in. You don't want nothing trying to usurp priority. And this is really what this means. God is saying, I have to be your number one source, which also means you got to trust my process. You got to trust my plan. I'm talking to Jules Denise Williams, because guess what? Sometimes when we waiting on God to do a thing, it don't work the way we want it. We be like, Lord, it's taking too long. Lord, when is it going to happen? When, Lord, when? 
Why, Lord? Why? But we've got to come to the place where we say, Lord, I trust your process. I trust your plan. If you promised that you were going to heal me, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to remind myself that you are all that I need. I don't need another relationship. I don't need something outside of you to fix me. And I'm not saying you don't go to the doctor, but even going to the doctor, you still are trusted in God. Even going to the doctor, you still saying that I'm trusting who God is. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trusting who God is in my life. Father, I thank you today. Now we're going to pray. If you got some specific things that you need prayer for, you put it in the comments. I know I've seen a few, um, but we're going to continue to pray for the healing of the Lord today. Father, we say thank you. I thank you that you are the God that heals. I thank you that you are the one that sees and understand. Father, I thank you today for healing Mont. So Father, I come right now and I ask you in the name of Jesus, uh, first and foremost, Lord God, to begin to heal our minds. Help our minds to be healed. We want to put on the mind of Christ. Help us to put on the mind of Christ because as we put on the mind of Christ, we can walk in the fullness of the understanding of who we've been called to do. When we put on the mind of Christ, then we can understand and align with the truth of the word. When we put on the mind of Christ, then when the enemy of our soul comes and tries to tell us, you are sick, you are poor, you are broke, we say no because we understand that who you are. We understand you're Jehovah Rapha and you're the Lord that heals us. We understand you're Jehovah Nisi and the banner over us is that I walk in the fullness and the anointing of God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that as you heal our mind, we put on the mind of Christ. We no longer will think wrong thoughts. We're going to think those things that are lovely and pure and of a good report. We're going to remember the promises or be prophetic words spoken over us. We're going to align with it. We're not just going to hear these words no more and put them in the wayside. We're going to partner with them. And I tell you this often, God said every prophetic word you've had began to partner it, began to steward it, pull it back out write it down, write your prayer strategies over it so that you can walk in the alignment so that your life can walk in the fullness and the healing that God has already prophesied over you. That's the banner over you. The word prophesied over you. That's the banner. He didn't change his mind. Come on, somebody pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Lord God, now I pray for our eyes. Give us eyes to see. Remove the spiritual cataracts off our eyes so that our eyes are able to see right. I ask also in the natural. Lord God, if anybody have any problems with their eyes, I speak wholeness to the eyes. I declare that there's your vision is being restored. And how do I know that? Because he did it for me. A couple of years ago, my eyes, I was losing my eyesight. I would get these poppings in my eyes and that had something to do with I wasn't taking care of myself. But I began to align with what God said and he's been reversing that thing. I can see and I haven't had that popping. My vision isn't blurry anymore. So God, thank you for being the healer of the eyes. Open up your children's eyes so that they can see clearer. And not only in the natural, but I declare in the spiritual realm that your children will have the ability to discern. They will be able to see what is right before them. They will be able to see what is the, the at the at their feet, but they also be able to see the light for the path because that is you. You give us the ability to see what is up the road. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we also ask in the mind, we thank you for the healing of those that have, have dementia and those that have Alzheimer's. Lord God, we're asking you to restore the ability for the mind to function. The enemy is trying to take out some of our seniors and our older people, that, that, that storehouse of wisdom by taking it out. But God, I speak a clarity of mind. Uh, no more dementia, no more Alzheimer's. Lord, we thank you that their minds are regulated in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for the healing of the eyes. Now, Lord God, touch us in our ears. Uh, Lord God, God, let us to be able to hear past the noise in the name of Jesus. Uh, I speak natural healing to anybody that has difficulty hearing in their ears. I declare healing over your ears right now in the name of Jesus, uh, but also by way of the spirit. I declare a greater discernment coming to you. I declare you'll be able to hear what the Lord says. Uh, you'll be able to distinguish 
what is God and what is noise. You'll be able to distinguish what is the Holy Spirit speaking and what is the deceptive spirit trying to distra- uh, distract you and to bring uh, 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 bring you out of alignment with the Lord. So I thank you in the name of Jesus for aligning our hearing. Lord God, I pray for the tongue in the name of Jesus. Uh, somebody had cancer of the tongue or somebody in a family had cancer of the tongue. We speak healing over the tongue right Right now, in the name of Jesus, we curse that cancer and tell it to go back to the pit of hell for which it came. Lord God, I thank you right now that you release healing over the tongue, but also by way of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, you told us to when we speak, we should say a yes, be a yes, and I know a no. Father, I speak no more iffy tongues of your people, no more wishy washy tongues from your people, no more saying one thing and doing another. I thank you that our tongue, our speaking is about to align to the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you that we will speak with clarity. That's right, Sapphire. We will speak with clarity. God, and I speak a boldness come from the tongues of your people. Let them speak with boldness, but let it be done in love. Lord God, let our tongues be tongues of love, but let it be like a sword that cuts down and cuts up the things of the devil, not cutting people, but cutting under that spirit of deception and the lying spirit. Father, I thank you that our tongues will not even want to be that which with, with gossip. No more gossip on our tongue. No more backbiting on our tongue. No more, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, We declare that our mouth is about to align to the the heart of God. We're going to speak what is on the heart of God. We're going to align our language, our tongues, our mouths to speak what the Holy Ghost says. Speak. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Touch the throat. There are those that sometimes when you go to speak and even when you are trying to do the things of God, you get choked up and you get to coughing and, and all of that. But I declare that 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 build up in your throat be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you for the for the um clarity. And some of you have like sinus, because I see some of that is sinus drippage. And so I speak to the sinus and I command you to righten yourself, to go into right alignment, work the way God c- called you to function. That's not the way you're supposed to function. So I curse that. I declare that you will work according to what God declared for you to work. So I thank you that 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 is being um realigned, that those sinuses being realigned, Lord God. And I know some people have sinus related to um, um, allergies. And so, Lord God, we thank you for healing allergies and reactions right now in the name of Jesus, because the enemy tries to use all of this to keep us from declaring your truth. But Father, we're going to declare your truth. So I just release the fire of God over this broadcast. I release the fire of God over you in your place. And I just declare a healing that break out in whatever you stand in need of. That's right. So even with the sore throat, yeah, I just declare that this a re- uh, uh, and the Lord says some of that has been from like screaming a lot or some of that has been from smoking and from other things. But I declare in the name of Jesus, I declare it's like it's almost like I see God lining your throat. It's like he's soothing it even right now. I just I feel it. I don't know who that is for, but there's like a soothingness that's coming over your throat because sometimes you try to talk and you always have to go. <clears throat> You have to clear your throat because that stuff gets caught. But I just declare that it is being soothed right now in the name of Jesus. I just declare that it's clearing up and it ain't going to sit in your chest because sometimes it's sitting in your chest. But I declare, nope, it's not going to sit in your chest. I declare complete healing from the top of your head all the way down. Just come on out in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I also declare healing over the heart. Lord God, there's many 
broken hearted. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that you are mending, you know, not, no, no, I take that back. Thank you, Jesus. You ain't mending, you giving new hearts. So let me tell you something. I was broken hearted and I went to this event and the Lord told me to meet him at the front. And when I went to the front and laid before the altar, God said, Jewel, I am giving you a new heart. And I promise you when I got up and he gave me that new heart, you know what happened? I couldn't even muster up the old emotions that went along with that hurt heart. So right now in the name of Jesus, I see some hands raised. I lay my hand on my chest, but I declare by way of the Holy Spirit that God is giving you a new heart. Right now, he is giving you a new heart. All of the brokenness is gone. That, 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 that memory will no longer be there. Why? Because you got a new heart. I feel it right there. I feel it. I feel it. Eh. I feel it. I feel it. Somebody receive that. I feel it. I feel it. I feel the heat being released. God says, I'm breaking that thing off for you so that you won't eat because somebody wakes up at night sometimes and, and, and you begin to you almost just have a sadness sometimes, but that is kind of the residue from the broken heartedness. But I declare that this new heart is going to you're going to receive the joy right now. I release the joy right now. Right now, right now, right now. You receive the joy right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Woo, woo, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it for your children, Jesus. Do it for, do it for, do it for, do it for. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Now, let me tell you what the Lord said. When he healed my heart, I kind of had this itching like I had had surgery. And I said, Lord, why does it itch? He said, I'm going to leave that itch just for a little while. He said, because I don't want you to reinfect it. Come on, somebody. How can you reinfect a new heart if you go back to start to rehearse those things from the past? God says, don't go back and pick up none of that old hurt. Don't go back and pick up none of that old stuff. He said, now begin. This is when you begin to pray and think and move and do in that new realm. He said, think on those things that are lovely and pure of a good report. Think over the new banner. That what's the new, the banner the Lord put over you. The banner over you is victory. The banner over you is joy. The banner over you is peace. The banner, the banner, the banner. There's no more banner over you of brokenness. There's no more banner over you of neglected. There's no more banner over you of sexually abused. God said, that's now my story. He has taken it because of the blood. And he said, that's his story. Now you're going to live, you're going to live his story. His story is a new story for you. He's made you new. Today is the new. Today walk in the newness that God has for you. Thank you. That's right. He changes your mentality because when he changes your heart, he got to change your mind. A changed mind needs to go along with a changed heart. That's why I started this prayer, starting about praying for your mind so that you put on the mind of Christ. Because if you don't have on the mind of Christ, you can't walk in the fullness of nothing else that he has for you. So, Father, I thank you. Also, Lord God, I, I hear the Lord say he is releasing some of you from false burdens. So I come against those false burdens right now in the name of Jesus. They are not yours. Let them go. God said they are not yours. Let them go. So I break those chains off of you. I see some of you. It's like like you have chains on your arm. I break those in the spirit. There's no more chains on you. Today, you walk in the freedom. No more burdens. Those are somebody else's. They're not yours. Thank you, Jesus. And then, Father, I pray for the rest of the body. I pray for the hands. Let our hands be at work doing what you've called for us to do. Let our hands find the right work. Let our hands find the place to be at work with you. Let our hands not be in, in things and entangled. God said, get your hands out of the wrong entanglements. Lord, let our hands not be entangled in things that are not of you. Let our hands be about touching and doing. I speak some new inventions come to you in creative ways. I thank you that the Lord is giving you creative ideas that will be your hand work. Thank you, Jesus. And then I pray for our bodies. Let our bodies be strengthened. I pray that we walk in the strength of God. I pray that we walk in the power of God. And when you walk in the strength and the power of God, I declare that whatever physical is going on, I declare by way of the Holy Ghost that you walk in the fullness. And I declare your feet. 
us. I declare a run be placed in your feet, that your feet will run and not get weary. I declare that your feet will run to the places that God has. I hear the Lord say, let your feet run into me. Just like he said in Psalms 20, 23, he said that even when you walk through some places, he going to be with you. I hear the Lord say, let your feet follow me. Let your feet follow my path. Let your feet go in the direction that I tell you to go. Because when your feet follow me, there's no way that you can't walk in the provisions and the nourishment and that you will get the rest that you need. Father, we declare that our feet will follow you. We declare that our feet are shod properly so that we can follow you. We declare that we're moving the way you want us to move. We declare it by way of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. Today, we've come and prayed from head to toe over our bodies. And we said, Lord, do the work that needs to be done on the inside. Because when you heal us from the inside out, we can then walk in the fullness of the healing that you got for us. Come on, somebody. God, you are so awesome. You are so good. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the one that heals us. You are the Lord, our shepherd, and we have all we need. There's no lack in us. There is no lack in us. There is no lack in us. And what I mean, no lack, not lack in my ability. There's no lack in him. You hold the Holy Ghost. You are a Holy Ghost carrier. He dwells in you. And I hear the whole, whole, whole go say, because if you let me dwell fully inside of you, guess what he does? He works on us. He changes us. He shifts us. He moves us to a better place. He moves us to the place that we need to be in. So Father, we say thank you. We give you the honor and the praise. I hear the Lord say, I will dwell with you. He said he has everything you need. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord say, I have all you need. And he said, it's grieved him because we won't come and ask him. The enemy has made many of us believe that God is not listening to us. The enemy has convinced many of you that you're too horrible. Your, your sin is too great. And so because of that, God's not listening. But the Holy Spirit say, I am the shepherd. I am the good, good shepherd. I have all that you need. Thank you, Jesus. He says, I have all that you need. And because I have all that you need, I will sustain you. God said, this is a season and many of us have been looking at what's going on around us. And we've allowed that to bring fear. We've allowed that to bring doubt. But God says, no, no, no. He said, I'm greater than COVID-19. I'm greater than the, the racial issues going on. I am greater. I have not forgotten about you. He said, trust me. There's a greater work that I'm doing. You just don't see it yet. He said, but there's something I'm working out for you and it's going to benefit you. But trust me in the process, come and put yourself completely in my hand. And when you put yourself completely in my hand, he says, I'm going to nourish you. You will not be malnutritioned in this season. Stay in the word. God says the word is where you will find your nutrients. He said, stay in my presence. In my presence, you will find the comfort, you will find the protection, and you will find rest for your weary bodies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we 
Father, we give you praise. Now, Father, I just ask that you seal these prayers that we pray. And for those that are seeking healing, Lord God, we ask you to release the healing virtue over their lives. Release it, Lord God. And for some of you, God said some, some, some of his healing is going to hit you in waves. He said, what's going to happen? You'll just feel like almost like your body get hot. Um, and he said, when you do do something, especially if you've had problems with your hands, he said, do something you haven't done before. That's your faith being activated. So you do something. So, for example, if somebody had a problem with your foot and if, if, if God, if you start to feel that heat, then God says, begin to move your ankle or try to stand up. And he said, it's OK if it doesn't work the first time. Even in scripture, you see Jesus prayed for some people more than one time and, and for their healing. I remember the man that was blind. He he said, what can you see? He said, I see men like trees. And then he prayed again and his his vision came. So don't. Don't let the enemy tell you if you prayed one time or some prayer happened one time and it didn't go away that God didn't hear you. Are you persistent enough? Are you hungry enough? Keep praying and keep praying and keep praying until you see the release. Because sometimes God is just teaching you how to trust him, how to battle, how to war for what you want. Because the enemy don't, don't going to give it to you easily. You got to be willing to war for it. You got to be willing to, to battle for it. And so I hear the Lord say that even you're gonna some of you're gonna feel like a wave that's gonna hit you you're gonna hear and 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 and, and i see somebody it's like a wave of joy because you've been in a place of depression and you've been in a in a place where you've been really heavy and it's just gonna hit you you're gonna find yourself just almost either laughing or weeping or crying no you're not crazy god is using that to heal you and he's trying to uh, uh, try to restore to you weeping i tell people all the time tears are a gift from god as you cry a lot of time god uses that to release stuff from you. So God says, accept now that you've received the healing, but allow the process. Because some of you, I don't know, you may have received it immediately. For others, it may be a process, but God still gets the glory. God still gets the glory. Jewel does absolutely nothing but partner in prayer and thank him that he gives me the honor to pray for you. But I believe by faith that there's some healing that's going, that's been released and you're going to begin to see it manifest in your life. So I want you to remember some when you get, when, when, when that healing is fully released, inbox me and give me the testimony so I can praise God with you. But we're going to praise God because God did the work. I thank you, Jesus. And, and I just let me say this thing too before, before I go. God wants us. That's right. I'm a big crybaby too, sis. God wants us to understand something. And, and this one, I, that's why I put the thing, the scripture about a jealous God. See, we as people, we don't mean no harm, but let's say if I laid hands on you and you got healed, because that's happened before. A couple of people have got healed through my prayers and laying hands on them, right? And the person came to me and said, you healed me. I said, no, I didn't. I prayed and God healed you because I understand God is a jealous God. He's not going to share what he did with me. I did not do that. And as people, sometimes if we get a message from somebody, a word from somebody, we then begin to elevate the person. There's a difference. Let me give you a quick teaching. Honor the vessel. So you can honor me as the vessel or honor somebody as the vessel, but the glory all goes to God. God is the healer. God is the deliverer. God even, I don't even have enough sense to give you great revelation if God don't first give it to me. And so we have to always remember we honor people, but all the glory goes to God. And so I want to make sure that you know that that's who I am. I receive no glory unto myself. It all goes to God. I I'm all, I don't even understand how he want to use us. <laughs> us flawed people. The fact that he wants to use us to do anything speaks to the awesomeness of the God we serve. It speaks to his great love for us that he includes us in the plan cuz he didn't have to. He didn't have to, but he includes us in the plan. Thank you, Jesus. I love you guys. And as I always tell you, and I mean this with my heart, it is my greatest pleasure and honor 
to pray for God's people. And I do it because I know what it felt like to need somebody to pray for you. I know what it felt like to need somebody to, to, to care enough for, for you. I know what it felt like to feel alone and not understand how you was going to get through with things. So that is the heart. And I thank God for giving me this heart. I didn't get it myself. He has developed it in me over time. And because of that, I am honored to pray. So when y'all see me on these Thursdays, I take these assignments serious. And I pray earnestly for you earnestly that you understand just how important you are to God. When you come off of my last, I want you to, if you don't walk away, if you remember nothing else I say, I want you to remember that you are important to God. You are so important that he makes me interrupt my every Thursday at 1030 so that I can come and pray for you. This was his doing, not Jules. This was his doing. And so I want you to receive that. He cares for you. You are important to him. And because you're important to him, you're important to me. You are a gift of God. Let no one treat you as an afterthought or a toss away. If God says you are valuable, then you are valuable. I must treat you as a guest and I must treat you as a gift. I must honor you in that way so that I can do what God has for you. And so God bless you guys. And I uh, hope to see you here next Thursday because this has been real good. So next Thursday, we're still praying through because we actually have one more Thursday. And next uh, Thursday, we are praying his name is holy. Come on, somebody. That's going to be good. So as I always say, let's pray until we see the mountains moved. God bless you and have a great rest of the day.